Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here today, and I'm going to be painting this loose line and wash watercolour painting of the Kyle of Lochouche. Um, it's inspired by a photograph that I found on Pixabay, and um, I'm going to be doing the line work with uh, Faber Castell artist pit pens. This is the photograph. Um, I've simplified it. I've removed the boat on the lake and removed a few of the buildings because they're a little bit jumbled up just to kind of give some clarity. Now here is my line work. You can see that I've focused on the group of cottages and the trees around them and kept everything else just very simple, just a few indications of where I'm going to put my watercolour washes. I'm going to paint wet in wet, so I'm going to wet the painting all over using a large um, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush. Um, and then I shall leave the paper to soak in a bit. I'm currently doing um, an online um, watercolour painting course um, with the great Andy Evanson. And I've been practising my skies according to his methods. And so I'm going to be trying to paint in... Um, a nice wet in wet sky, um, making it a little bit darker than I normally do, painting around the white areas of cloud and trying to get something sort of quite close to the sky in the photograph with those sort of looming black clouds that sort of blowing in across the scene that become a little bit paler as they come down behind the distant mountains. So I'm using a mixture here of um, Payne's Grey, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Blue and Lavender Blue. I'm adding different amounts of those colours to darken up or lighten up the sky according to where I need it. I'm using this synthetic uh, mottler brush by Princeton. It's an Aqua Elite one and a half inches wide and it's a really nice brush to paint skies with. My board is at an angle of about 45 degrees so gravity is helping me to paint and the washes are softly diffusing wet in wet on the page. While the wash is still wet I'm bringing the wash down um, across the mountains to add some mid-tones to the mountains in this underpainting, this first layer, cutting around the cottages because I want to leave those mostly um, white of the paper to start with, so they really stand out nicely. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed um, watercolour paper. It's 140 pound weight or 300 GSM and it's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38. I've just brought some of that same sky colour down um, and swept it horizontally across the lock area to just give a really simple treatment to the water and then put in a bit of shadows around underneath the cottages to get that sort of um, that lovely neutral bluey grey in straight away. So now I'm mixing up some raw sienna um, or you could use yellow ochre, but it's a bit more opaque. So raw sienna, I'm mixing that into my sky colour, which is just neutralising it slightly. And I've swept it across for my foreground and my midground, um, dipping in and out of the sky colour to bring in some colour to that. And also putting some colour where there are trees and bushes around about my cottages. And I'm making sure that I add a little bit more of my sky colour where I want it darker and a little bit more of my raw sienna where I want it a bit brighter for some of the tree areas and just a few highlights across the foreground. And then dipping back into my sky colour um, to get some colour on the roofs. In this part of um, the country, um, the roofs are all made from grey slate and so I'm trying to express that here um, and giving them that very similar colour to the sky. And as I work wet in wet, it's um, I'm trying to sort of just see if I can just uh, get a few little bits of, of darker tone into the foreground and the midground so that it will all soften and diffuse before it dries off. 
making sure that I keep lots of lovely lost edges in the foreground and that should give me just the impression of the land rather than trying to overtly paint too much detail. And now I'm going to darken up some of the trees um, by adding a bit of ultramarine blue into my sky colour, uh, balancing it out with a little bit more of the raw sienna if I need to, um, and just um, dotting in with this um, size zero synthetic Da Vinci spin round quill brush uh, to get in some of my darker trees. bushes and things like that, shadows all around those cottages. Just building up the scene little by little now, adding, adding the darks into the painting just to sort of bring um, everything into focus a little bit more in my sort of centre of interest. The sky is almost dry now while I've been painting. Um, so I'm, I'm being careful not to use a wet brush when I'm putting in these details, keeping my brush nice and dry um, and only applying paint and certainly not water. This is um, the corner of a plastic um, store card. You could use your fingernail or um, a palette knife just to scrape through that damp paint in the trees uh, to try and get a little bit more light into those areas. It's all looking a bit dark at the moment, but once I've darkened up the mountains when it's fully dry, hopefully that should bring our scene out beautifully. I shall now leave it to dry completely. As soon as it's dry, I'm going to mix up a richer, darker mixture of my sky colour by adding a bit more Payne's Grey to it. So it's Payne's Grey, Lavender Blue, ultramarine blue and cobalt blue with just a touch of raw sienna to neutralize it and using a three quarter inch synthetic flat brush i'm adding in that little bit of headland that you can see behind the cottages stretching out into the distant lake it's a little bit closer than the mountains further back so i'm getting that in first keeping it nice and dark trying to make sure I sort of continue it and then going in with that same dark colour to put some of that dark tone across the mountains and then I shall cut around my buildings and my trees. And that should um, give me the sense of shadow from the clouds over the mountains And the counter change of light against dark should help the cottages to sort of really um, shine out as they catch the light. Um, and I should get some nice lost edges with my trees and my mountains, just enough found edges to be able to see the trees there. Uh, but I don't want them to be too, to stand out too much as say, I want everything to sort of be in shadow apart from the parts of the buildings that are catching the light. And again, working in that fairly dark near a headland and then I shall get lighter as I go back using sort of um, weaker mixtures, cooler mixtures of this colour um, for the distant mountains. And hopefully that then should begin to give me that vast sense of distance um, that you get when you visit and see this wonderful part of Scotland. Trying to be careful to keep a nice sort of straight, flat edge where the mountains meet the lock in the distance. I shall put some boats in across there with a little bit of white gouache at the end and they should stand out quite nicely against that dark crop of mountains. You can see now that I'm making sure that I'm using lighter paint and then dabbing in across that top mountain range in the far distance almost outlining it and then I'll get a, a damp brush and just pull that paint down and soften it with this round brush just pulling it down into the slightly darker range of mountains 
and then hopefully I'll get some variation in tone there which should just help to send those and push those mountains back into the distance. And now I'll let all of this dry again so that I can come back in on the mountains behind the cottages and darken them up even more just around the cottages um, to really help to push out the light on the buildings as much as I can. So this is um, the same mixture, um, making sure that there's hardly any water on the brush so that it stays nice and dark. Using a small round brush, this has got a good point, this Da Vinci Spin Size Zero synthetic brush. Um, so it means that I can work around the buildings and the trees quite carefully, trying to make sure I keep quite a loose ragged edge around the trees and a nice straight edge around the buildings. And then darkening up this building will just bring this mountain forward behind the cottages and push the distant mountains on the other side of the tree uh, back further. If you can hear a sort of distant rumbling in the background, that's my coffee and it's letting me know that it's almost ready. And now just using the same dark colour to put in a few shadows here and there in the mid-ground and the foreground. Not too much, but just enough to highlight what's already there and just sort of um, suggest a bit of detail. So this is um, uh, just something and nothing to try and describe the lay of the land in a way that doesn't attract too much attention to it because we want the viewer's eye to kind of sort of um, move over it and look at the, the buildings, the mountains, the lake and the sky. Just getting enough shadows in there, adding a bit of water to that mix and glazing across the foreground so you can still see the raw sienna colour underneath. So moving on to the finishing touches now, some raw sienna um, just dabbed into the tree line here and there um, to bring out a slightly more golden glow and then some slightly darker um, dots and dashes just to balance out those trees a bit more then back in with the raw sienna again. As I said, I want to sort of lose some of the trees against the shadowy mountains, uh, but find parts of the trees as well, um, so that it really does describe the fact that there's quite deep shadow in front of the mountains. Now I've mixed up some white gouache and on this very fine rigger brush, I'm going to put in a few white masts and little dabs to suggest Yachts moored up on the distant shore of the lock. It's quite fine detail and doesn't show very much, but it's just a little touch against the dark mountains um, that just gives that impression, again, of distance and light just catching those masts. So I think I'm just about finished, so I'm going to remove the tape. When I see it with a clean white border, it usually helps me to see it with fresh eyes and I can see if it needs anything doing to it. Um, or I can always walk away from it and um, come back in a couple of, of days and see if I think I need to make any adjustments. But I think... Today I'm going to just quickly put in a few just very fine light branches with the rigger brush into the trees here and there. Not many, but just enough to pick out a little bit more light. 
So again, this is my white gouache. It's an opaque white colour and it just gives me that little hint of light on the trees. So standing back and having a look at it, and while I've got the rigger, I'm going to rinse the rigger out, dip it into my dark tree colour and then just dot around the edge just to get that slightly sort of more ragged edge so that you can see the sky behind the sort of looser parts of the canopy at the top of the tree. So I'm going to call that finished for a nice loose painting. I think it's worked out well. Here it is against a plain white background. And I'm pleased with the depth and distance, um, also the size of sky. I've got a nice big sky today and I'm really pleased with the perspective in the clouds. And I think the something and nothing foreground is working well here too. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll give something similar a go. I shall leave um, a link to the Pixabay photograph if you're inspired to give it a try. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please um, click on the thumbs up if you did and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already because that really helps with our reach and it's free to do. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And of course, thank you so much to everyone on Patreon um, who supports this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.